All right, so in the last video, we were talking about setting up the dual simplex method. We were giving, I gave you a little bit of motivation for that using this tableau, which came from a minimization problem with the greater than or equal to signs. And the idea was, is that instead of looking for row adds row zero and pivoting on those columns, we were going to instead use these right hand sides and pivot, uh, find the pivot row first and then use the pivot column. Okay, so let's uh, review how that went. Uh, this is called the dual simplex method. So I'm going to outline the steps and then we'll try a couple of examples. So uh, the first one was to assume that row zero was greater than or equal to zero. And the reason for that was because that gave us a feasible primal. Okay, uh, next, um, in each excess variable, it has a corresponding minus one in a particular row, right? Because it's minus the column of the identity. And so we're going to multiply that uh, row by a minus one, and that gives us a minus uh, or a negative value in the right hand side. Okay, uh, so the way the algorithm will really start here, step three is where the starting point actually is. You find the row with the largest negative right hand side. So the right hand side. What happens if there are no negatives in the right hand side? Ah, you've got an optimal solution. Otherwise, so we, there is a negative row, and so we uh, that will be our pivoting row. Okay, and now how do we find our the column? We're going to take a ratio test, but it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, remember that row zero is going to have the numerator, and uh, the column or the row that with the negative value up here is going to be the denominator, and only the negative values in that row are going to be uh, in the denominator, right? Okay, and then you take the absolute value of those, uh, find the minimum, and that is the uh, pivot column. So once you found your pivot row and your pivot column, you've got a pivot entry. Oh, by the way, if you if there are no negative values in your pivot row, so that you cannot do the ratio test, that means that the problem is infeasible, and we talked about that in the last video. Okay, otherwise we can pivot, and then we repeat from step three. And then you just keep repeating until you either have an optimal solution or an infeasible solution. Good, let's try an example. Here we go. Uh, solve the min problem. You'll notice that these are positive here, so when I convert them to a max, right, I'm going to negate them, and then when I bring them over uh, to the z value or on the other side of the equation they become positive again for the tableau and so here's my tableau right multiply that by negative the two rows by negative one and here we go let's get started we're going to start by taking this row to be our pivot row and then how do you find your pivot column you only take the negative values in this row as your denominators and then we'll have two minus or two divided by minus two, which is one in absolute value. Four divided by minus three is four thirds, right, in absolute value. And so therefore we're going to pivot at this negative two. Very good. Bring that in. And now we only have one other pivot row left. So now it's four divided by minus five halves versus one divided by minus one half, take the absolute value. So that's a two, so it's, we're gonna bring in x two, right? And so uh, when we do that, what's gonna happen? Voila, no more, pos uh, no more negatives in the right-hand side. Therefore, this is our optimal solution. X one is equal to 11 fifths, X two is equal to two fifths. And remember that this is the negative of the value that we actually want. So in terms of the original problem, the original minimum is 28 fifths. Very good. X3 is equal to zero, by the way. Good. All right. Um, what happens if we want to bring in a new constraint, like x1 plus 2x3 is greater than or equal to 4? Well, we can just uh, pull that in. Uh, what's kind of nice about the dual simplex method is we don't have to restart from scratch. So once I Let's write down our tableau that we have here, and I'll bring in my new constraint. So this is for x1 plus 2x3. I'm going to need another excess variable and a 4 there. And now I don't have a feasible solution anymore, so what am I going to do? 
multiply this row by minus 1. And then I'm going to uh, make these back into the columns of the identity. And so that takes a little bit of work there. But uh, when we're finished, we get this. OK, so now we want to interpret what this means. Um, so uh, if I bring in this new constraint, does my current does my current solution stay feasible? And the answer is no, because um, we're going to have to uh, incorporate this new constraint into our into our uh, uh, problem. Okay, another way to look at this is to say if I have this constraint, is it satisfied? if I use this old solution, if x1 is equal to 11 fifths and x2 is equal to 2 fifths. So let's see, what is 11 fifths plus 8 fifths? 19 fifths. Is 19 fifths greater than or equal to 4? No. So therefore, um, that's that's why this is, uh, this is not a, this constraint is not satisfied with our current solution. Okay? And so, um, however, uh, what's nice about the dual simplex method, and the reason we were talking about it at this point, is we can go ahead and continue this problem, right? And uh, what variable would come into our basic solution now if I were to continue? Well, uh, I would. I only have one negative value here, and so E1 would be coming in, and E3 would be going out, and I could do the pivot right here. Okay? And there it is. So if I do this pivot, then what's the new solution that I get? Uh, x1 is 12 fifths, x2 is 4 fifths, and then x3 stays as 0, but now e1 is in our solution instead of e3. Okay, and so um, by adding a new constraint, there are actually several different outcomes that could happen. The current solution could satisfy the new constraint, and in which case the old solution is still optimal. So I should have really checked that first before I just constructed the new um, the new line in my array. But that's okay. Uh, current solution does not satisfy the new constraint, but the LP is still feasible. This is the case that we just looked at. And so um, in that case, we had a negative. We ended up giving a negative value on the right-hand side. And then we can use the dual simplex to incorporate the new constraint into the tableau. Right? That's what we did right here. So we we use the dual uh, simplex method to make this all positive again. And uh, in doing so, we got a new solution. Okay. And so uh, we got our new solution. What's the third possibility? Have you decided? What happens if the new constraint makes the entire set infeasible? If the current solution does not satisfy the new constraint, right, then the new LP becomes feasible. So that is possible. Uh, how would that have been possible? Let's go back to our uh, matrix here. And so if this had been a positive right here, uh, or would that do it if that was a positive? I don't think so. However, uh, what if these were all positive so that I could not use the ratio test and I could not pivot anymore? That would that is what would make it feasible infeasible. So let's repeat that again. So if I bring in my new constraint, right, just like I did here, and after pulling it in, I try to uh, incorporate this constraint into my system, and I'm not able to do that, right? If I'm not able to use the ratio test, if these had been all positive ones, I would have been in trouble because right, I wouldn't be able to do the ratio test, then the set would have been, I would have concluded that the set was infeasible. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here uh, because I've got another example. Um, and the new example in the next video is going to be um, what happens if we have a new right-hand side and a new solution? And then we'll, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so that's about 10 minutes. Um, I'll see you in the next video.